Welcome back to Danganronpa. All right, today we catch a killer. Then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means since the crime scene was in the boys' locker room, you would need a boys' e-handbook. Since Leon's is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to been a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to figure out some more clues. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but... Did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No, it's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes. I did see him. What? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before nighttime. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I'd better get going. I'm in kind of a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. 
Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously Who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? Why? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say. But fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shahiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue? Somehow it's really hard to believe. First of all, we know where Chihiro was heading. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because... It matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! I... I don't even have a tracksuit. Cause exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? No, it's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then I assumed he headed off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... you 
just... Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? Are... Are you talking about Jahiro? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it, to put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. The way he talked? There was a certain turning point that ticked me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I... I... I, I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> My time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then... Um... Here it is. Huh? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to Chihiro. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. 
For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken, as is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? How did they break? There's only one possible explanation. I got it! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah! You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> who might have brought their handbook into the sauna? It had to be the one who wore all their clothes into the sauna. It was definitely Mondo. Here's my answer! Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? 
Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh... No, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... But I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. It would have been the broken E handbook in the lobby, I'm guessing. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, it's wrong! Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if it's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries, if anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple, because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and 
and attacked him. And that's where the bloodstains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally, carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? on him evidence that mondo is the killer that already revealed itself earlier in the trial if i can somehow show where mondo's handbook is right now once i do that everything will become clear so we're going to do that in the next episode and we'll get to the sentencing next time so i hope you'll come back and see what happens next in danganronpa Thanks for watching and bye for now.